Hollywood sells nostalgia. That's just what they do. It's become a worryingly reoccurring trend to retread old ground, particularly stuff from the 80s, and redistribute the same stories we know and love as new, shinier versions. Ninja Turtles, Transformers, G.I. Joe, and now, without doubt, the biggest cultural phenomenon to come from that decade, Star Wars. Everybody is rightfully worried going into this. We've been hurt before and never has there been a launch more hyped and anticipated than this movie. The marketing has been everything from excitingly invigorating to aggressively stupid. Literally, if this movie was the greatest thing to ever fall upon this earth, it still wouldn't be anywhere near as good as the build-up has promised. On that basis, so much could go wrong here. This film had all the potential to be awful. I myself was crazy nervous walking into it. I was worried that by getting excited, I was setting myself up for a downfall. If it turned out to be horrendously bad, or even worse, average and forgettable, after The Phantom Menace had already betrayed me so, I'd have just felt silly and embarrassed. Like I'd taken back a cheating ex-girlfriend or need to have her fool around and break my heart again. Except in this scenario, I think I'd actually be a little more wounded. And could it ever really be as good as those original films? I mean, not only were they amazing feats of cinema, but they also seemed to advance the way the movies were made by about 30 years in the way they matched practical effects with digital aids and created a whole epically massive piece of expanded fiction that we'd never seen anything quite like before. Disney, the new rights holders, are also kind of notorious for making properties into massive cash cows, and with the tsunami of licensed toys and gadgets, and already announced spin-offs and sequel plans, the movie had the worrying possibility of being one big shameless paycheck for all involved. So here's the thing, I went in both anxious and already somewhat devoted, and from this position it's kind of difficult to do a non-biased review. After all, I, like many people, am incredibly invested in this franchise. I've gotten hyped, I've went to a midnight release, I've discussed, I've analysed, I've even done a 40 minute long alternate pitch for how I personally would have liked the prequel trilogy to go. <coughs> Shameless plug, you should go watch that. <coughs> so needless to say, I kind of had a lot writing on this on a personal level, and looking at it as a movie objectively and trying to remove myself from this mass fandom, I think this was a slightly flawed but still really enjoyable movie. However. As a Star Wars fan, I'm absolutely thrilled to say that my time revisiting this much-loved saga was a brilliantly happy reunion. Now I'm going to keep this review spoiler free, as I wouldn't want to ruin the single most hyped up thing in the entire universe for absolutely anybody. I will go into some analysis of very specific scenes after the review that I want to talk about, but not before flinging up huge spoiler warnings that the review is over and the plot points are on their way. Firstly, I'll say this, don't threat. You guys have nothing to worry about. It's not a perfect movie, not at all, but it is a perfect Star Wars movie, and I can count on only a single hand the number of things I dislike about it. 90% of it is absolutely great. Somehow, despite having more pressure on him than most astronauts, J.J. Abrams has managed to smash it out of the park. Everything about this movie reeks of Star Wars. As a director, he somehow feels more invested in this universe than creator George Lucas ever seemed to be during the making of the prequel trilogy. If J.J. ever felt panicked by the fact he was carrying quite possibly the largest cinema release that may ever happen in history, it really didn't show. The action, the world building, the sense of scale and wonder are all carried out with an unfiltered confidence, creating a whole new universe that feels to not only be a direct continuation of the original trilogy, but also a sensical massive expansion. The new characters are equally stellar, particularly the two protagonist leads, portrayed excellently by John Boyega and Daisy Ridley. The chemistry between them is amazing, and there's a surprisingly pleasant amount of effective comedy interspersed between the heavy action set pieces and the character building drama that wouldn't work if the whole cast didn't do a brilliant job of having this joyously bouncing rapport. One thing that had me panicking before the movie was released was the emphasis on the return of old familiar faces. As you all know from the trailers, Luke, Leia and Han are all back. But rather than coming to the forefront and stealing the show in an attempt to cash in on the love fans have for the original three movies, they are excellently handled and pushed just enough into the background that their presence didn't disappear from the movie completely and so that they didn't steal the limelight from our new heroes. It was a perfect passing of the torch from the old to the new, and it's absolutely crazy that I'm looking forward to more Star Wars movies to take them further out of the picture. As I said though, it isn't without its flaws. Though the use of the older characters is near perfect, the use of some old plot devices is not. I'll not talk about exactly what I mean by this until after the spoiler warning, but what I will say is expect the movie to retread some old ground in ways that can sometimes feel a little ham-fisted. There's also some 
fairly dodgy CG at times. Before you panic, we aren't talking anywhere near the levels of the Phantom Menace, but some characters and effects don't seem to fit the world surrounding them. It's not that the CG is bad, it's actually quite good, it's just that there's been a big focus in replicating that original trilogy feel, so a large chunk of the environment, races and technology the characters interact with is all practical effects, which works astoundingly well, as everything feels tangible and the world feels lived in. It's because of this though, that in the rare moments CG is used, it kinda sticks out like a sore thumb amongst the rest of this living, breathing world. If you can get past that though, this movie is almost exactly like you want it to be. The whole package is just fun. It captures the same sense of adventure we fell in love with in our childhoods, and although it relies a little too much on picking up the heartstrings of our deep-seated nostalgia, it's still an incredibly well-constructed and deeply enjoyable blast to watch. Simply put, if you even remotely like Star Wars, go see this movie. It's a great deal of fun and feels like the perfect hangover cure for anyone scorned by the prequel trilogy. A lot of you mightn't like it if you're going in wanting it to drop an earth shattering bomb on cinema as we know it, equivalent to the industry shaking originals, but if you just want a close to flawless continuation of a much loved saga we never thought we'd see continued to this level again, then you're in for a good ride. Because this film is absolutely deserving of the greatest possible praise I could give it, and that is it feels like a Star Wars movie. Now if you haven't seen the movie, consider the review over. I'm going to go deep into the things I liked and disliked a little bit now, but I can't do that without going into spoiler territory, so if you don't want anything ruined, turn off the video because spoilers are coming in 3, 2, 1. Okay, so one of the issues I have with the movie is it can't decide if it wants to be a retread of old narratives or something new entirely. Leaving Luke to be an enigma in the distance only to give his reveal at the end and have him not deliver a single line is a stroke of genius. It would have been so easy to have Luke just strut in early on in the movie and hang around for the sake of being nice trailer fodder and an easy ticket seller, but this narrative should never be about him or the original cast members. Leia was equally treated well in this sense in that she was present enough to be a nice blast of fond memories, but not so much she wound in as to interfere with the brilliant Rey and Finn. Now Han Solo played a much more prominent role, but this was okay, because of how his narrative played out. Though it was intricately woven into the plot of the main characters, it felt more like a complement to their story than one that took over completely, and since his arc inevitably led to his demise, he really needed to be as consistently present as he was, because killing off a cameo simply wouldn't have had the same emotional pull. Speaking of his death, and I'm going to get unprofessional here, fuck! Perfect. The quiet setting, the subtlety, the deliberate build up, Chewie going nuts afterwards, just spot on. When you got that shot of Kylo Ren on the bridge and Han walking through to meet him over that smoky cavern, my heart was a flutter. You know what's coming and it still works. I expected Han to die before I even went into the movie, but I was worried we were going to see something completely different. Something a lot more on the nose, like him dying in Leia's arms as she tells him she loves him and his last words being, I know. But this was much more nuanced. It showed so much character growth from the Han of the originals. This old and still charming but kind of wise and loving presentation felt like the perfect evolution of the character. A young Han in New Hope would have disowned this son. He saw things as being too black and white, good and evil, reality and force mumbo jumbo. He'd have had no time for him. But the Han that grew through to the events of Return of the Jedi and now Force Awakens, the one who fell in love and had a child with Leia, that Han was played out perfectly here. However, this brings me to something I really didn't like. I had very mixed feelings on Kylo Ren. I think he was amazing, but at times handled poorly. When he had his mask on for the first half of the film, he felt legitimately terrifying and intimidating. The dude was ordering mass slaughters and torturing people, all the while carrying an air of genuine presence about him. And then he took off his helmet. It's not that I didn't like Adam Driver, it's just that here he looked wrong like a prepubescent Max Landis, which was weird because in the snow scenes later in the movie, he looked really spot on. By having him remove his helmet this early on, they really dished out such a moment at the completely incorrect point in the film. By the time he gets to Han, we already don't fear him. He's been humanised and made unthreatening. When the helmet stays on, he's kind of scary and aggressive and we don't like him and his presence is intimidating. I mean, there's a reason we didn't see Vader's face till episode 6 when he redeemed himself. Had they left the helmet removal for Kylo Ren till the moment Han confronts him, I feel it would have enhanced an already excellent scene somewhat. We'd have had this idea of him being intimidating still, and then when we saw in the moment with his father he had kind of this baby face thing going on, 
would have been surprised and taken back and maybe even sort of got caught up in the moment of, oh shit, there's a human under there, perhaps Han stands a chance here. I just don't know why he took his helmet off so early and for something so inconsequential. It might sound picky, but it really bugs me a lot. Much like the narrative retreads. For all the wonders the film does with the old cast, it seems intent on burying us in revisited plot beats. I mean, holy shit, a plot twist centred around a familial revelation, a join me on the dark side moment, and Death Star 3, really? In my opinion, Death Star 2 was kinda stupid in return, but this new Death Star is really clutching its straws. Particularly cringy was the meeting scene where they're discussing how to handle it and one guy's just like, ah, it's just another Death Star, we've knocked up two of them already, this'll be a piece of piss. Then the other guy's like, nah, it's bigger. And then everyone's like, whoa, lads, how are, what, what got no, what got no, we're fucked, it's bigger, it, it, it's, it's obviously a bigger threat because it is bigger. It was eye-rollingly on the nose. Add to this a lot of Deus Ex Machina, like Han just happening to find the Falcon after our heroes stole it, and that glasses alien just happening to have in her possession Luke's old lightsaber, the planet splitting perfectly in a way that separated Rey and Kylo Ren. Ah, there was a fair bit of... Ah, there was a fair bit of plot contrivance. Other than that though, I really enjoyed how a lot of it was done. The lightsaber battles in particular were absolute highlights working the perfect balance between crazy spectacle and gritty realism. The world was great, I love how it looked, how it felt, the scale of the shots. It was just really solid all around and I thoroughly enjoyed the whole production both as a Star Wars fan and even still as just a general moviegoer. It was never going to live up to the cruel amounts of hype, but it did come surprisingly close. And honestly, if I was Abrams and crew, I'd have been crying myself to sleep every night with worry. It's good to see that in the end, though they didn't make the be-all, end-all greatest movie in the world, they did make a goddamn Star Wars movie.